Why should I prepare food for you? You're not my bloodline. I don't even call you family. Don't get too comfortable with me. Why are you even here in this house in the first place? I ask my son and granddaughter to come over, so I can spend some quality time with my family. Can you leave us alone? Awkwardness filled the living room of my parents-in-law's house. My mother-in-law, who eliminated every time we saw each other, was a big pain in my neck. But one day, mommy, oh my God, it's grandma! What happened? My blood drained from my face when my panic-stricken daughter told me what happened. My name is Amelia. I married my husband Peter when I was 25 and gave birth to my daughter Olivia when I was 29. I quit my job upon marriage and have been a housewife. I'm 39 now, and my happy family of three live in a rented apartment. I live a fulfilled life, but there is one big problem. That is Judy, Peter's mother. Her behavior toward me has been the cause of my headaches. Frankly speaking, she has been bullying me. She told me herself that she doesn't accept me as the wife of her son. Although she did not outwardly oppose our marriage, I've been snubbed for various reasons from the very beginning. She used to show up unannounced, force herself inside the house, and complain about the way I did the housework and the taste of my cooking. Before I came pregnant with Olivia, she made unreasonable demands that I have to give birth to a boy. Then she would bring her worn-out, tattered clothes to me, saying, "They look good on you." She even sent me health rotten vegetables on COD without my permission. In short, she has done pretty much everything that most people would call baiting. What keeps me sane is that Peter and Olivia are always on my side. Whenever Peter finds me being bullied by Judy, he always intervenes. Olivia tells her, "I don't like it when you speak ill of my mom." When Judy talks bad about me. When I go to my in-laws' house, she says something sarcastic about me, even in front of Brian, my father-in-law. Every time he scolds her not to say such things, she never minded and continues to torment me, as if it was part of her daily routine. One day, Olivia came home from school with a gloomy look on her face. Normally, she cheerfully shouted, "Mom, I'm home!" at the front door. But she was silent. Hey, sweetie, you're home. What's wrong? Did something happen? Are you sick? Hey, mom. Nothing. I'm fine. She brushed it off, but continued to look as if she was in a state of deep thought after that. She was always smiling and cheerful, so it bothered me very much. I knew she was at a sensitive age and didn't want to pester her. But I couldn't just leave it at that. Peter had to work late that day, so it was going to be just the two of us at dinner. I thought she would talk to me then. When she was slowly eating her bowl of mac and cheese, I started the conversation. I'm worried about you. When you say you're okay, it's often not the case. I will never tell anyone and won't get angry. No matter what happens, I'm always on your side. Can you tell me what happened? She put down the fork and remained silent for a while. Then she made up her mind and opened her mouth. She began to explain as articulately as a ten-year-old could. She went to play with a friend at her house, which was a fifteen-minute drive from ours after school. She sometimes went there, and her friend's mom drove her back afterward. On the way home. When the car stopped at the traffic lights, she saw Judy working arm in arm with a young man she didn't know. She even saw them kissing. As soon as she realized it was her grandmother, she ducked down not to be seen. I couldn't believe my ears at that completely unexpected story. The idea of her being affectionate with another man in plain sight, close to where we live, was so abominable. It must have been traumatizing to witness such a scene for a ten-year-old. I soothed her, 
and suggest that she take an aroma bath. In the meantime, I went to the corner grocer and brought her favorite ice cream. Normally, I would not give her sweets before bed, but it was unlike any other day. She was looking gloomy for a long time, but she cheered up a little upon seeing the package. And by the time she finished eating, she was almost back to her normal self. Still, I knew her innocent heart was broken. I told myself to keep a close eye on her for a while. Then, Peter came home tired from work, less than half an hour after Olivia went to sleep. I thought it was a cruelty to tell him that his mother was having an affair with a young man, but I could not keep it from him. I told him exactly what Olivia had told me. He was enjoying his beer in the living room, but when he heard the story, he covered his mouth with a hand and ran to the kitchen. He came back with a wobbly step and mumbled weakly, "Seriously?" I could feel his pain and disgust. When he calmed down, we discussed our plans. What are we going to do about that? Shouldn't we let Brian know? Well, we can't just leave it like this. If we were to tell him, we need to gather more evidence. I worry that she could make excuses if we only have Olivia's story. I agree with him. We decided to ask a private investigator to look into Judy's infidelity. I was impressed by the work of a professional. The investigator gathered the evidence photos in no time after I requested them. There was a picture of Judy, dressed in appropriately of her age, embracing a young man. It was a sight I didn't want to see, but I had no choice but to confirm it. The investigator also found the identity of the young man. He was a college student. Who actively looked for older women? Judy had been contributing a considerable amount of money to him. There was also a photo of them entering a designer's brand boutique. It didn't look like adultery, but rather she was being swindled by the young man. Anyway, there was no doubt of infidelity, and she must have been aware that it was cheating on her part. We got concrete evidence to trap her in. We weren't going to let her get away with it. The only thing left was when to tell Brian. While Peter and I were waiting for the right moment, Judy called him, asking him to come over on the weekend. That was great timing. If I went there, she would most likely find a way to bully me. I was certain of that from my past experiences. If they were the case, I could expose everything then. Who would be laughing in the end? The weekend had arrived. I was usually pressed about visiting Judy, but I couldn't wait to see her that day. I could finally reveal her misdeeds. What I was imagining this and that, my family and I arrived at my in-laws' house. As soon as we parked the car, Judy opened the front door with a smile on her face. Ah,、oh, you're here. Hi, Peter and Olivia. Welcome. I prepared a delicious lunch, and it's waiting for you. Come on in. As I had expected, her bullying started right away. She acted as if I were not there. She turned her back on me and didn't make eye contact. Even though I was annoyed by her boldness, I tried to think it wasn't a big deal and calmed myself. Peter was about to say something to her, but I stopped him. We needed to be patient. It wasn't better to let her carry on with it and then knock her down. When we were in the living room, Brian was sitting on the sofa watching TV. Oh, Amelia, Olivia, and Peter, welcome. Nothing exciting here, but make yourself at home. He always called my name first. It might have been nothing to him, but it always made me very happy. As I exchanged greetings with him, Judy happily said, "We got a delivery for lunch. Come on, let's eat together. I'm sure the food is delicious." She laid out the plates on the dining table. The lunch was Thai food. There was a papaya salad, pad Thai, green curry. 
tom yum soup, and so on. They sure look delicious, but I was allergic to coriander. Judy, of course, knew that. You know, Judy, I'm allergic to coriander, right? I'm sorry, but I can't eat most of them. She answered. I know that, dismissively. Then, words began to pour from her lips, as thought a dam inside her had broken. I don't need you to tell me what you're allergic to. I didn't count you in for lunch anyway. My family is only four of us: Brian, Peter, Olivia, and me. Why should I prepare food for you? Why are you even here? I invited Peter and Olivia to come over. What an inconsiderate person you are! She was unstoppable. Let me make this clear, Amelia. You should be ashamed of yourself for being a half-hearted housewife who doesn't even do housework and sits idle all day long. You shouldn't just take advantage of the kind and hard-working Peter. I mean, you don't work and you neglect your housework. What do you do all day every day? You're not having an affair with some guy, are you? Ugh! Who knows? Me having an affair? Who was talking? Peter, who was standing next to me, gave out a groan of dismay. Well, it was about time. I couldn't believe she brought up the perfect subject herself. I asked Peter if I could bring it up. He nodded enthusiastically. Not only had she been nasty to me, but she had traumatized Olivia. I was going to make her pay for all of that. I took out the photo evidence from my bag and handed it not to Judy but to Brian. They looked at the pictures in confusion. At first. Both of them seem not to understand what they are looking at, but as soon as they realized, their faces changed color. Brian's turned red, and Judy's turned white. I was amazed by the contrast. What are these? As you see, Judy is having an affair with this young man. Olivia saw them together. She suspected me of having an affair, but it seems she was just talking about herself. No, that's not true. I'm not having an affair with Justin. It's purely. Judy was so panicked that she blurted out the young man's name. Brian got angrier and shouted, "Who's Justin?" I heard you brought a lot of things for him. A total of about a couple of thousand. No, I think it's more like a couple of ten thousands. You're a housewife too. So where in the world did that money come from? It can't be the money Brian has earned, can it? Oh, you're so bad. You shouldn't take advantage of his kindness. I took the opportunity to press hard on her. Judy was horrified, and even thought her mouth was moving. No words came out of it. She probably never thought that I would talk back to her. Mom. That's been so good to you, hasn't it? Why do you have to cheat on him? I'm ashamed of you for not only bullying Amelia, but doing unspeakable things behind his back. You don't love Grandpa? I feel sorry for him. I don't like you, Grandma. Peter and Olivia was bland her harshly. I knew something was fishy. You've been sneaking out day and night lately. I checked bank account and found that you had been withdrawing little by little. I never thought that you were having an affair with such a young man. Brian shook his head in disbelief, pushed to the edge. Judy somehow rebounded and lifted her chin in defiance. What I do is none of your business. I will live my life the way I want to. Brian erupted with anger at her attitude. And shouted at her to get out of the house. His fury didn't subside after that, and the two ended up filing for divorce. Judy had no income and no savings, so she could no longer contribute to her beloved Justin. He simply abandoned her. How did I find out? 
Judy told me herself. She was so desperate that she turned to us and stormed into our house. She hoped that we sympathized with her if we knew her devastation. I only have you to rely on, Peter. I can't get in touch with Justin anymore. Please, I apologize to you too, Amelia. I don't trust you anymore. Why don't you just live your life the way you want to, like you said before? Not my business. Of course, we had no sympathy for her. I would never forgive her for traumatizing Olivia. Eventually, we called the police to remove her. Brian had gone around telling all the relatives that Judy had an affair, and that she bullied me, so she couldn't rely on them either. I heard that she was living alone in the shabby apartment and continued to pay alimony. She has truly brought this on herself. On the other hand. Brian decided to move in with us since he became alone. He's better with children than I expected. He takes Olivia to various places on weekends. Olivia also enjoys hanging out with him, and seems to be gradually forgetting about Judy. Furthermore, he's helping me with the housework, saying he feels bad for living rent-free. In the beginning, I had to teach him step by step. Now he can do everything by himself, and even cooks dinner for us. Thanks to him, I'm able to go out and work part time. It took me a while to get used to working after a long break, but I enjoy being outside the home. I'm even thinking about getting a certification in something. Since Brian has moved in with us, I can feel the quality of our life improving. He protected me. When Judy bullied me, and is still supporting me in many ways, Judy was truly an idiot to betray such a nice man. I learned from her mistake not to indulge immediate greed, and to be grateful for the happiness I have now.